History Month is over, but we got some black history to talk about <laughs> hey. on this show. We got AG Zero in the building. We got the legend Rashad McCants in the building. <laughs> I don't want to gas y'all up <laughs> with the crown. <laughs> Always. Always. I don't want to gas y'all up, but we have a special appearance by KD on this show. Kind of, sort of. All right. Legally safe. We can say that. Legally safe. <laughs> we got our first white guy Wednesday because Black History Month is over. I can eat mayonnaise again. <laughs> <laughs> no mayonnaise in February. Y'all know the rules. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Spherical whip. It's a miracle whip. <laughs> but we got to talk about some news that just broke before we came on air uh, involving John Morant. Ooh, who he dunk on? <laughs> <laughs> he getting dunked on. Uh, John Morant has been accused of allegedly beating up a 17 year old boy and pointing a gun at him, according to the Washington Post. What? So I'm going to read a quote. The teenager told detectives from the Shelby County Sheriff's Office that after the fight, so it was a pickup game at Josh Crib. Okay. Apparently, seven, him and the 17-year-old got into it. I know what that normally means. Somebody's getting cooked or talking a little too much. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But uh, so after the fight, Morant went into his house and reemerged with a gun visible in, in his waistband. This is all allegedly. But when you look at Ja, everything he's doing on the court, amazing. But in, in the last year, he's had at least three instances now. For, it, we got the uh, allegedly pointing lasers at the Pacer staff. Somebody said somebody in his crew. Okay. May have had a. May that's not a, him, but that's somebody in his crew. Somebody got in his crew. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he got into it with, with mall security after a finish line employee disrespected his mom. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. I have questions. Me too. If you job mom, you can't be at finish line. Come on, mama. We got the internet. You rich. That's why I don't go to. The, you don't go to the mall no more. They Nike, have smoke. Nike, <laughs> Nike explo- employee store. You got the yeah. employee store. Get the di- employee discount. Finish line. It used to be a great store. No disrespect. Finish line. If you have a bag for us, no disrespect. <laughs> but when have you ever seen somebody at a finish line in the last 15, 20 years? Never. Mm-hmm. So that's already an issue. And third is the situation with the 17-year-old, which is during the summer in a pickup game. So it's crazy because you look at Ja last night, uh, played the Lakers, very disappointing uh, showing on the Lakers standpoint. But Ja had a 28 third po- point quarter, which I think is the most points by any player this season in a quarter. Helping give the Grizzlies a win of, what, a 39-point triple-double, 39, 10, and 10. Mm. Mm. Yes, sir. So, Gil, mm. I mean, you've dealt with some, <laughs> some, some off-court adversity before, we'll just say. You're familiar with weaponry and, and things like that. <laughs> you know it. Weaponry. And so, you know it. You're the perfect person to ask. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> How should Ja move with all this drama surrounding him at this point in the season? Um, listen, okay. In the summer, summer basketball, right? Uh, at the house, most likely it was 80 style, right? Just fouling and stuff. So, you know, just like any typical player, we're going to say, don't be here when I get back. I'm going to the car. Your mother got. <laughs> that's, and that's, so I'm I know better than sure anybody. <laughs> Them games can get heated. Sometimes you got to go to the car and get the other gun. <laughs> you just sold the first gun to get some bread to play the pickup game. You got other. <laughs> Buy a Caucasian. Hey, so I mean, you know that that uh, uh, <laughs> I've done that before. Oh, man, you better not <laughs> I've be. I've seen it happen before. You better not be here. With yeah, that you game. better not be here with. So I'm, I'm questioning the seventeen-year-old. Why are you still there when he man, says come back? I'm going to get my gun. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot everybody. Yeah. We done all heard it playing basketball. You gotta go hop the fence, uh, get in the whip. You gotta have your boot waiting. My, yep. Motor running. My biggest question is. Uh, You know how we say, why is he pretending to be? Hold on, we not. If his mother called him to come, not the father. Mm. His mom was at finish line. Or somebody uh-huh. got fin- lippy. Yeah, but we, we we isn't Big T around? But you don't disrespect the Morants in Memphis. I know. So you call your son. You he got to be Pablo Escobar. Right Big T said, "Where is Big T? <laughs> he got to be the you man." Like, like, first. What has he done for his mind to say, "I'm calling. I'm calling my baby. We gonna see when he gets here." Mm. That's. That's some power. T, t-, t- looked too much like Usher, so he's easy to identify. <laughs> Damn. I'm just saying. He's like, going to get Usher fire. caught up with some stuff. Like, you know, it, he's young, man. You know, it, it's, it's, really, it's really hard to, to guide young 
because you know they they have to go through the experience, you know, for them to be wise. So you just be like, you, I mean, you can say whatever you want to 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 the to the youth, um, but you know that whole Grizzlies team, they're they're all young. They don't have any veterans, you know, to really guide them so they can see, you know, um, how to move. Um, Nine people. Hey, if you're gonna send nine, send your friends, and you sit in the car. And you, yeah, you stay at the crib. I mean, you know, it's you know, your mom should have a bodyguard. I mean, if she's going to the mall, I mean, you, you're you're that person now. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. We too, we too established for this type of bullshit. We too established for Ja to be doing anything to put himself in jeopardy. Like the music is doing that. Think about it. What really? music? The music that's trying to make him tough. Like. The, the NBA young boy, the little dirt, like the, uh, uh, I'm about that life. And no, no, you not. Because you don't want to be a casualty of war out here because you want to be tough. And then you get somebody really rolling up on you mm -hmm. and really pull them things out on you. Now you got to act tough in front of the, the crowd that don't play tough. They don't play tough. And we, we seen in Memphis, that they're not about that bullshit. No. No, true, but I mean, you're, still, you're, st you're still talking 23. If you take everybody at 23 since 2000, same. We not we not rolling same. with the we not rolling with the straps. We not rolling with the straps, and we know we control our entourage enough to be like, hey, look, do not mm. overstep. Don't overstep this. Mm. You gotta, you Your gotta man say. had the gun. Your man might have had the strap, but you didn't. Oh, no, you, I, I well, you, you might have had the strap. You, you might have had the strap. Listen, go to State 2001. It was yeah, different. It what? was different. I came in and y'all better not be here when I get back. <laughs> y'all better not be in this locker room when I, you're not going to drown me and think it's all exactly. cool. You're right. You know, you got Rookie Hazen. I ain't know nothing about no Rookie Hazen because right. I was a jokester. You're right. Yeah, they, no, I came back. But it's different, though. Girl, you I talking about back. you, Hazen, Oakland. Like, hey, man, I might need a strap round here. <laughs> I might. But we talking about 2023. We talking about NBA basketball where you the most protected. We talking about social media where you can't get away with nothing without us really going to get you. So what are you really doing this, it, though? It, just like anything, let's just be honest. When we're young, we do soup shit. We, we do stupid shit. Like, we're trying to pretend that 23 is real old. Okay. It's not. It's 23 with a lot of money. What have you learned? Where is your guidance? There is. So you're doing stupid shit. There's going to be some dumb shit that you do. Some of us been caught. Some of us hasn't. But isn't that behavior from someone who don't got a father figure? He got his daddy there. Like, your dad supposed to step in. LeVar ain't letting Lonzo and them do no shit like this. He might let him drop a mixtape. Wait, hold on. Just hold a mixtape. Hold on. Hold just on. a mixtape. Hold on. Wait, stop. If we look at Lonzo and look at LaMelo, the way they both move, do they look like they're coming from the same father? Damn. That's right. One is, <laughs> one is wild than a motherfucker out there, boy. He got Lambo, Ferrari, better. You but know, right. but Grills you got, playing in the game in Grills. But you got, you got Lonzo, you got Jello, and you got LaMelo. So he saw it from both of them. But that's what I'm saying. And he, he wilded up. But I'm saying, it's. A kid is going to be a kid. But he was the younger. But like, you got to remember, right now, right now, it, you know, his father is not, his father only sees him in the games. and He's not really around when he's with his friends. You know, he's still trying to play to his friends. But until he get rid of his friends and yep. keep the ones that's going to help him build, yep. you know, this is just the behavior. That's just, you know, it's not like he has an older brother that's like in the 30s and say, yo, what you doing? Like, right. you know what I mean? So everybody is his same age. And he's the breadwinner. So the question is this: Do we accept this behavior? Do I we, do. Do you accept it as, you as the pass? team? I need more information. I'm, I'm the owner. Yeah, I'm the owner. You the owner? Do you and John accept Morant's this? getting in trouble? And he out there doing what he doing? You John Morant? I'm dry. <laughs> <laughs> Go give me twenty eight in the third I quarter. Hear, I me three shit. I, I don't see nothing. Nothing? I don't see nothing. We're knocking hey, on the door. How you hey, doing today? Hey, hey. <laughs> hey. Mm -mm. We found hey, a body. Man, I'm not. I'm, listen, I'm going to do, like do like every other dude, every, uh, every owner does. Pretend I don't see it. Wow. Damn. We rolling there. Right. Well, John, let's just don't rub, just don't rob no bank, man. <laughs> just, listen, don't just, rob no bank. Just grow up a little bit faster. Just it's, it's you got too much time on your hands. <laughs> I get it. So, Gil, you mentioned earlier uh, the Grizzlies really don't have that, that veteran presence that can come in 
and really lock shit down. Like, yo, we're not doing all this stuff, young fellas. So, in your opinion, who do you think that one vet is that could come in and help Ja? I think they need Udonis Haslam. Like, that's, that's the only man who could. Yeah, I mean, could man, listen. Temper this shit. Y'all not really yeah. about that. But you got to remember, you, you, like, if you watch how the whole team moves themselves, they all move in the same way, right? You know, challenging um, Shannon Sharp on the court. Like, you can see they're all, <laughs> it's a wolf pack. Yep. In a card. It's literally a wolf pack of players, which is, is amazing <laughs> on the court because they're all riding for each other. But, you know, it's just the guidance off the court when you're just dealing outside and regular, just regular everyday life because they're not normal. Right? So they're taking that, that, uh, that, that mentality that they have, you know, and they're, they're, they're moving with it like, no, nah, that's not. But I think you, you more than anybody have seen what can happen as a result of that type of stuff. So, so is it worth it? No. Is, it's not, no, no. no. The, behavior is not, the behavior is not worth it because there is an end result, and the end result is, we sitting here. Um, oh, Lord, come <laughs> taking on. Taking 20 years to, you know what I mean? But no, 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 <laughs> serious. It's, it's, it's not worth it because at the end of the day, only you go down. Yep. And if you go down, everything goes down. Yeah. Like if your friends get busted, they ain't nothing. You, it whole seems family, like they everybody. Wanna, they want to take the, the big fish, right? They're going to always the big fish. I don't care about the lower level, dude. I care about the dude who's going to make $100 million because he's the one that's going to bring attention to everything and really help me make mm -hmm. my name. So if I can take him down. Yeah, I mean, that's just. But, bro, what, what, at what point do you not get the message? Like, just cut, we can't give him the excuse because you're 23 and you're young that you're not getting this message through other people like yourself who is an example, don't do this, bro. This is the, gonna be the result to that. Ja, why would you continue down a path like this where you gonna look for trouble? I could see if trouble reach you. Mm -hmm. You know how to respond to that. But when you looking for it, like, yeah, I got the strap. You don't wanna rock with me. Like, bro, you gonna sit your little ass down somewhere? You got but, but, 200 million, look, uh, look at that 200 <laughs> million. What the hell do you look like fighting anybody? I got three butlers back here that got karate belts. They gonna kick but, some ass for me. But that's where the vet comes in. Say, you, you can send someone, you can call, finish line. Hey, this is John Morant. <laughs> like, but that's an older person doing it. Right. This is John Morant. Right. Hey, there's problems going on with my mother up there. Can, you know, can we talk, talk about it? That's our age. Get her out of finish line. That age. I'm going up there. What's up, Ma? Like, I, what's up, Ma? Who, who's fucking with you? Who fucking with you? Yeah, that's that's that age, and that's why as <laughs> that, that's why as a as an older person, we're talking, we're talking with the experience of already. So yeah. we're judging when if you take us back to 23, ah, we were just as stupid. You're right. You're right. Like I was going in, I was going in the club with guns, putting the gun on the table while I drink my liquor. Man, thinking it was cool. Don't know why I was doing it. <laughs> so Don't only, know why I was doing it, just doing it. So the only vet really in Memphis history that can talk some sense into Zebo would be Zebo. Because he know about that stuff. Zebo, Zebo, you know, because Zebo been in trouble yeah. with that stuff. So he, he knows the results. Yeah. You know, when you're 23, you're invincible. You, you think you're invincible. You think you can't be taken down. And that's just the, the, how we think, period. Yeah. Everyone, you know, from, you know, whatever you're doing, you think your body's never going to be heard and everybody's old and you, you're washed. You, you've oh, heard that. Man. You're washed. Like, oh, yeah, you're going to be here too. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> You'll be here one day. You know, so it's one of those, you know, it's one of those people that's already been there. Like, talking to Michael Conley, eh, he's going eh. you know, to hit him with the eh, cornball. Cornball. You know what I mean? So you got to, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to put Ja around somebody who's, who's been the same way, you know, and actually got out of it. Safely. What do you well, respect? Someone yeah. you respect. Yeah. Someone yeah. that can actually talk to him. I can think of one former Memphis Grizzly uh, leading the podcast game. Arguably the greatest basketball show oh, that's on me? the internet. Gil, you got to pull up to Memphis in the Shannon Sharp card again because I think he'll respond to that. <laughs> It'll already let him know. Well, you want them is. to pull the gun on me. <laughs> oh, all right. You got, you got I ain't stupid. stupid. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't messing with them Grizzly players. They crazy. That boys is crazy over there. <laughs> now, I appreciate both of y'all's perspective on this one, so we're going to keep this thing moving. Now, we got my favorite segment coming up. To quote my favorite light-skinned Canadian, fuck <laughs> being on some chill shit, we go 0 to 100 real quick, Gil. Oh, okay. So, 0 to 100, we got to start in the Bay, one of your former homes, the Warriors. 
Mm-hmm. Clay Thompson. Out here doing it. After the Warriors come back win over the Blazers Tuesday night, I think they were, were down 18 at one point, came back and won. Clay Thompson uh, talked his shit. And I promise you this, when we're healthy, no one wants to see us in the postseason. <laughs> I guarantee that. I promise you that. So we heard it. Uh-huh. Zero to 100 chances that the Warriors win the West. Win the West? Win it. Go to the NBA Finals again. Zero. To win the West? Mm-mm. Let me get Zero. On. No. Let me make sure it's just Gil on this. No, I mean, you're like, you're, you're like, to win the West. To win it. it fully healthy. That squad. Mm-mm. The most prolific light skinned duo we've ever seen, besides the DeBarge family. To zero. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> prolific, Gil. Smoke Chico rock. L, you already know. Like, I'm, like, I have them at zero, but Clay is correct. No one wants to see them in the playoffs. So they, you got, but you can't even get one mm. in the West. Like a one percent. Right They've, ah, nah. It's over with. Mm-mm-mm. You it's over. agree, Rashad? It's over. It's over. As I stated the last episode about the Jordan Poole, Draymond Green dilemma debacle, right? And then the statement that he just made, like, no one wants to see us when we're healthy. Well, you guys ain't really seen no other teams while they've been healthy. In the West, it's always been somebody hurt that's been stopping the Golden State Warriors dynasty. And when they're healthy, they win, right? But when the other teams are not healthy, you ain't got no competition. And every championship, we see something with the Cleveland Cavaliers, my homeboy over there. He, he know that the excuse for Cleveland was, we ain't had Kyrie, we ain't had K-Love, we was never really, really healthy, right? Mm-hmm. So we can't use that excuse as, oh, they don't wanna, nobody want to see us in the... Man, y'all, y'all they had y'all time now. And I was a, a Warriors guy. Like, I, I rooted for them on their way up because they played good ball. But now it's a new league where you got new talent. The last three, four years has built up where the West now is a place where you can really showcase your talent. They done stacked the West where y'all not over here by yourself no more. We got real hoopers over here now that's going to challenge y'all getting to that last spot. And last year was one of those years where it was injury prone. You guys made it through, got to the end, and made it happen because we know what y'all can do. Steph going to do what he do if he mm-hmm. get the opportunity. Clay going to show up when he need to show up. But now I think this year is going to be the year where we really transform the West where we don't know who the fuck going to come out. So we know about the Warriors Grizzlies beef. That'd be a great playoff matchup to see. But for me, if we get that Suns Warriors, mm. Adam Silver, no, them All Star numbers was boo boo. We gotta <laughs> keep. We gotta it. manipulate the system a little bit. <laughs> Write the script. If we, yeah, we gotta get them script writers really working overtime. If we can get that Suns Warriors playoff matchup, do you think the Warriors would have enough? No. To beat. To beat the no. 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 The, the reason is this. The person that helped him last year, who really changed the team last year, ain't performing that well this year. Or he ain't doing, he, ain't, he didn't take the next step, and that's Wiggins. Yep. You know, Wiggins was an all-star last year. He played well. You know, you got to remember, everyone counted him out. Yep. And, you know, adding Wiggins really helped that team. And this year, he didn't take that next leap to say, I'm here I'm, a, I'm better than an all-star. I'm an all-NBA player. He didn't take that challenge to be just a better version of himself, which now it's now is just back to the big, older three. Mm. And, yeah. But is that on him? I mean, you, you yes. start that season last year without Clay. He's getting a lot more reps, looks, buckets. How is he supposed to take that next step? Jordan Poole has now emerged it, and evolved. But, you know, it's Canadians, you know, they're nice. They're very nice. They're very nice you gotta people. Got to take it. You know what I mean? You're very, you're very nice people. You know what I mean? So you know, you know, Clay comes back. Hey, motherfucker, you, you third, you, you third option. You second option. I'm here now. That should have been the conversation. Like when KD came and y'all was your third option. I'm second option. You third option. And then let it go from there. But you know, Clay comes back and then you take a back seat. Then you take a back seat to pool. It's like ah. But when he should have made that extra leap. He's averaging like 17 points a game this year. He averaged 17 last year, so you think he should have made... It was a different 17. He should have been been that this year, he should have been about 20. He should have been 
Yeah. Instead, fuck being a Canadian, I'm taking my. Yeah, it should have been like, because Clay, you got to remember, Clay's going to do Clay. Yeah. So you don't take a back seat to Clay because Clay is going to do Clay. So when, when people didn't understand when, when KD came, Clay led the team in shooting. Mm. All right, KD, I mean, uh, Clay scored 60 with Step and KD on the court. So you should have personally took the second option role. Yep. Knowing that Clay is gonna shoot his shit anyway. Yeah. And you know, by you taking a fourth role, it kind of messes up the dynamic of the team. Oh man. So we talk about we let's talk about Clay a little bit. Obviously, coming back from that two-year absent last year, it was a little shaky early in the season. Even Warriors fans saying he was washed. Warriors fans start turning to Lakers fans. It was it was beautiful to see just the level of delusion that started <laughs> happening. Whoa, what, what fans did you say? Warriors fans. Turn into the Laker fans? Somewhat. That, that, that delusional sect, though, they started shitting on players, bullying guys. Mm. You mean San Francisco fans? Is that what it's the tech bros now? Yeah, those, those, those they're fans. They're not true not, Oakland? No, that's not Oakland. Those are not the Warrior fans that we're seeing. Oh, the Warrior fans are still in Oakland waiting for the Warriors to come back. Mm. They need to. Because that, that's a different crowd. That's a different team. Like San Francisco is different than Oakland. So those fans is. But but by and large, it was uh, Clay's wash, like, you know. That's it, San Francisco it, fans. <laughs> but we even look in just a small sample size, his last three games, he's averaging 32 points per game, obviously with no Steph, shooting 52% from three. So do you feel like Killer Clay is back in full effect? He's always been there. You know what I mean? It's, it's just trying to find his rhythm. Like when you're missing years, you're trying to find the rhythm, the speed, get your, your legs under you, get your confidence back. That takes time. You know what I mean? It's not something... Um, that just, you know, happens overnight. It takes time. It takes games. And, you know, a game like this is perfect for Clay because Clay himself has ruined all leads that the Blazers had mm. against them. So when you think about the 2019 Western Conference Finals, and me and Dame used to talk about it, and I said, listen, when you guys are up, focused on Clay only. Because he has short-term memory yep. loss, he does not have no concept of score, so he's the most dangerous player on the Warriors when they're down big because he's going to take shots that you wouldn't think someone would take when they're down 20. So he's going to be the guy that's in four games straight. Game three, four, and five. I mean, game what, two, three, four. They're up. Clay. Yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> so, you know, so same thing like yesterday. That same person you need to watch out for is the guy who has no conscience. Like, Clay, Clay, man, to me, is like, you can make a statement, like, you know, you got to watch Clay, you got to make sure he don't get off. But to me, it's like, you've had the opportunity to get back in shape. You've had enough time to kill the rust off. Ain't no more excuses, right? Like, how long do we give him this excuse of, oh, you got to get back, you know, got to get back into it, got to wash all this rust off. The last three games has shown, like, okay, he's going to be a shooter. Shooter, mm -hmm. shoot. Like, we're going to shoot ourselves out of a slump. Mm -hmm. But it's like, all right, if you're slowing down, you got to defer now. Mm -hmm. You can't keep the same load on your shoulders that you had when you was winning championships compared to when you got hurt and then you had to come back. That's when Wiggins has to step up. Like y'all said, like, the, you're an asshole for calling, you know, the, Can the Canadian shit, right? He's nice. Because <laughs> he's too nice. He's nice. But, but, you you but, pissed off but, the Canadian, you pissed off uh -huh. Canadian, we, we might as well, we're going to take everybody, we're going to have everybody. Call worst, them worst nice as yeah. Call yeah. them yeah. nice as bad? Like, it's, I don't it, think Canadians want to be, be considered Americans. It's accurate, though. <laughs> How accurate it is, because it's like, that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Like, even in Minnesota, he was too nice to cat. And, mm -hmm. and, and Levine, so you look now, it's like, all right, Wiggins, you had the 17, it was a different 17 mm -hmm. last year than this one. And you got Steph being out, Clay not being himself, he's supposed to be an all NBA type of guy. But for Clay, it's like you come in with the expectation that everyone's not supposed to talk shit about your play when you haven't reached the, where you were. We don't got the same expectation for you. Mm -hmm. We just want you to show up and be Clay. That's not be the championship guy that's going to hit 60 and 12 dribbles is hit open shots, bro. Like, that's it. Hit open shots, play two-way defense, get us where we need to be. But when you got Wiggins not performing and you got Clay out and you got Jordan Poole trying to find his way, you got you to gotta dismantle a team 
And then you look at Draymond. Where the hell is the, the Hall of Famer Draymond and all his numbers? Where's the onus on him? Like, it ain't, he, like he a forgotten giant. Like, I'm, I'm waiting for He do more commentating than he do rebounding now. Different, different team. Like, we're not, we're not adjusting to, like, different players, different schemes, different styles. Um, you know, if you're used to pick and roll, pop, drive, swing, um, now it's pick and roll, he keeps it. Yep. Now he's going to do something. Now I'm sitting here. Then it comes to pass. Like, I don't have that advantage. So, you know, there's a little things that tweak, you know, players. But, you know, when it comes to Clay himself, you got to remember, I missed all last year. Mm-hmm. I came back, you know, this year. They said, how many, you know, how long does it take to get the rust off? Probably a year. Yep. Right? Come back. You know, it's going to take a minute because you got to remember, I still have to prove that I'm still the same person. When does reality kick in and say, I can't even do that anymore? Now I got to adjust my game. But you got a whole year to adjust your game. Like, no, you don't. As, as far as the year you're talking about, he was out. The mm-hmm. whole year he was out, right? Yeah. So now going into training camp, going into these opportunities to knock the rust off, training. how much of that rust is going to come off before None. we stop giving you excuses? None. Where's this training camp? Who am I going to training camp? A preseason. You got the first 20 games. What are we doing in rough the first from, 20 games? Rough from knee injuries? You got a whole year of rehabbing. Re- rehabbing has nothing to do with the game. Of course not. I got to play against James Harden. Yep. I got to stick Kevin Durant. But it's like, not your I first learn- time doing that. It's not your first time going up against those guys. It's not your rookie year. You've had experience. With you know my how new much you knee. need. You know what you need. With my new knee. You know what you need. <laughs> so with my new knee, I got to make sure this shit is stable. You said this. You said an 80% injured me is better than half of these all-stars, Stars. right? Uh-huh. So a 80% is Clay Thompson can shoot, trigger, bomb, bomb, bomb. Mm-hmm. He turns into Kyle Corver. He turns into Jason Capono. He turns into just a dead-eye shooter. He may not be able to move as good as he used to, defend as good, but an 80% but, clay, we but, rolling with him. But that's what we have. We have an 80% clay. So there ain't no excuse for him to be 100% clay. No, we're judging him on 100% when he's 80%. So that's where we have to lower the bar for him and say, you're 80%. This is, you're playing 80%. I agree. Just like, just I like agree. somebody like Derrick Rose, right? How long did it take Derrick Rose to mentally understand he could not right. do the same thing he used to? It took him years, years, yeah, four or five years to realize when I drive, I can't jump. Like I used to. Now I gotta actually change my whole game yep. around this this new stuff. What is this? I gotta. What is this? And you know, and that's when he started having the mental stuff. But he was able to change that game, right? How long did it take him? What is Clay changing his game to then? Because Derek could change his game into a different type of point guard, still be effective. But it took him four. It took him four or five. You remember he quit. He quit on the Cavs. You remember, he meant he hurt his ankle and got to remember, as soon as he hurt his ankle, he has the flashback of mm-hmm. every injury. Yep. Because you got to remember, what happened with Derek is every, he hurt his ankle, coming off the ankle injury, he tore his knee. Yep. So imagine if you tore your knee three times, ankle injury, tore knee. Then you come to Cleveland, ankle. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, shit, oh, hell no. It's over with. It's, you're mentally, this is a mental thing, so he quits. Like, yep. I, I, I need a mental break. Yep. Because all he's thinking is it's relapse. It's going to keep happening. You know, so, you know, you got to remember, with Clay, it, it's going to, it's, it's a blockage. But it's, it's I don't see, I don't, I don't see, I don't see Clay being the Clay we used to see until next year. Age, though. How long do we wait as management? Like, look, Clay always going to be Clay. We had a run with him. We got memories. We got championships. Hey, bro, tone it down a little bit. Tone it down. Jordan Poole, come on in here. Let's get these shots up. Hey, look, Clay, look, we need you when we need you. We'll put you in. Hmm. Hello, what did he have last night? He had 23. 23? That was the, the, the lowest of his, the last three games. I think it was like 42, 32. But remember, he's going to give us up points because of the league and the defense but that's that's out I said. there. I got he going to give us what about we 80%, need. but you – that's, that's a 40-point clay, though. But that's the clay the, you're talking about is a 40, 50-point clay. But clay. that's what I'm saying. Until we tell Wiggins, until Wiggins step up into the second s- slot, yep. how can you tell can't. 
You're right. You can't tell him to stand down. Absolutely. You're absolutely (laughs) right. But for me, it's not about telling him to stand down or not. It's about him being able to deliver that. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have the ability to deliver knowing you got to step up? Like, we're not telling you to step down because Wiggins not going to step up. You got to step up. But can you step up and can you hold it? Yeah. That's real. Clay, if you're watching this show, uh, I'm sure you're going to have some feelings. You you may respond at some point, but be sure to like and subscribe. Okay, we're trying to get the numbers up. I'm trying to get the numbers up. (laughs) Trying to get the numbers up. And just before we move on, I got to mention Wiggins. He's been out since February 13th dealing with an undisclosed personal issue. Mm -hmm. But y'all saying when he comes back, he he needs to take that that next step. Like, I mean, it's like if if they're going to make a run, like, to be honest, if he comes back and we, we see this really aggressive, player on the offense, defense, I mean, him taking about 15 to 18 shots, mm-hmm. then, then Golden State changes. Yep. It, they really change because now you have to focus on him, which makes Clay more dangerous. Mm-hmm. And then Poole has his thing going on. Curry's going to do Curry. You know what I mean? Now Draymond has four players that he can sit here and – you know, so everybody in heightens off of one player deciding he's going to be ultra aggressive. And it feels like a KD Warriors. Yes, it feels like KD Warriors. Of, that that type of feel. But y'all still giving a them broke zero. man. A broke man. We're gonna do what they do. A broke man's KD. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what the fuck that ever what the meant. Fuck that what does that mean when <laughs> they do poor a poor man's? <laughs> so so technically, he's exactly like KD. Just hasn't hit his contract yet. Yeah. Like what what is the yeah. the concept of it? But he's a Rolex, but it don't sweep. It t- yeah. but it still look good. <laughs> or it look, or look, don't work. It's, it's a Rolex. They come up with anything like. But let's keep it in the West. Got to talk about these Dallas Mavericks. So you know the big news was the Kyrie trade. The Mavs have been struggling, though. They're 2-4 and four since the trade, 1-4 and four when Kyrie and Luka both played together. So they played the Pacers Tuesday night. I'd be forgetting my days. I take edibles before the show. Mm-hmm. Played the Pacers Tuesday night. <laughs> Luka had 39 on his birthday. But it came down to the final shot. Kyrie took that shot, missed the potential game winner. So do you have a problem, or first want to ask, 0-100, to 100, what are the chances that Luka – and Kyrie can coexist and actually be successful in this Western Conference. Coexist 100. You said co- them two, right? Yeah. Them two is fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like, them two is fine. They're trying to figure it out. They're trying to figure out, like, who does what. Um, you got to remember. <laughs> okay, y'all got me. <laughs> y'all got me. I just gotta heard remember. it. I yeah. just heard it. That's, <laughs> like your, that's, that's your, like, said you got to remember for the I just, I just t-shirt. heard it. I just heard it. I just, I just you. heard it. You got to remember, um, man. Luca has an amazing game, but he is deciding that Kyrie is going to take the last one. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So, you know, he is the man. So he is dictating what's going on, and he's still trying to figure, figure it out also. Um, the players who it's, – it's the rest of the team. The rest of the team – listen, do what y'all were doing before Katie got there. I mean, uh, Kyrie. before Kyrie got yeah, there. I got you. Play. Do you. Yep. They're superstars. They will figure out how to play around you guys. That's what makes players great. Yep. Right? So you stop. You guys don't need to defer to, you know, uh, Kyrie. He's going to figure out your games. And I, I think the faster the team, the rest of the players play their normal game, it would be easier for them to. Um, but that's the only thing I see. I, I, you know, when – Sometimes, and I, I remember saying this about the Lakers when, you know, Braun first got there. Like, yo, y'all play y'all game. He'll, he'll figure it out. That's what he does. He'll figure out everyone's strength and weaknesses just by watching you guys play. So stop, you know, doing what you do to give him the ball yep. because, you know, he, he, he's, he's who he is. Okay. I'll roll with that. I'm going to hunt it. Let's see. I'm going to hunt it, too, because if you look at the two players, right, Luca. And who he had as his Robins, Dinwiddie, Brunson, mm-hmm. Przingis, right? Those weren't guys who, when he's out, can produce how he produces. Mm-hmm. Now he has a real Batman with him mm-hmm. that can play Robin, that has played Robin mm-hmm. many times and understands the role, but also knows that he can be Batman, mm-hmm. right? So Luca's out, Kyrie can go for 30, 40. Right, but he can also control the team, run the team, mm-hmm. 
And if you got a big man out there that you got to defer to, you can't trust him. Maybe he don't shoot free throws well. Maybe he's not aggressive enough. That was the Przingis case. They mm -hmm. thought they were going to be unicorns together. Couldn't depend on Przingis. He got somebody he can depend on now. And now it's just about the utility guys. Just what you just said. Play y'all game. Mm -hmm. Don't change nothing that you're doing out here because Kyrie's going to adjust. And that's been the problem with guys who play with LeBron. Like you said, they don't know how to just – play mm -hmm. he gonna figure it out yeah like he did in Miami mm -hmm. like hey man uh, D-Way look I don't need y'all to do nothing just, just, just do you I'll figure it out <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me a year and I got it so Kyrie is the same way like I think Kyrie's gonna show Dallas that that spark of how they got that championship that one time they had a loaded team mm -hmm. they're not gonna need that they just need guys to hit shots you need Bullock to hit shots you need um uh Tim Hardaway Jr. to hit shots mm -hmm. You need Green to run the floor. Holiday. You need and you need uh, Powell mm -hmm. and JaVale McGee is going to be the key for them. They, 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 don't they, play him, they don't play him enough. They need to play him way more. Mm -hmm. Way more. I love JaVale McGee's game. Uh, and I think he's perfect for them and Powell as well. They just need guys that's going to run the floor, do little utility shit. And they'll be good. So I'm with 100. 100 okay. with them. Let's move out to Minnesota. What was it like as a black man living in Minnesota? It's cold. Who? It seemed cold. It's cold um, until you're in a grocery store and you break in front of a white lady and it's get hot in there. It's, like, <laughs> it's get, getting hot. Lady, this is my, I'm in line first. <laughs> Karen, come out. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, it, you know, it's, it's Minnesota's tough. It's, it's cool. It's okay. Cool. Oh, oh you my got the God, finish line? Minnesota, oh my, that's horrible. Minnesota's horrible. It's not. They got Prince of Kirby Puckett, girl. No, I like no. white girls. I like no, white girls. No, no, white no. girls. They're horrible. I just thought about what <laughs> I just thought about what y'all did. It was a storm coming coming from Chicago, and we had to we had to land somewhere far, and then we had to drive through the snowstorm, right? We're playing you guys. Y'all decided to turn off the hot water. Oh lord! They had to turn off the hot water so we couldn't actually take showers. Cause think about it, the water is actually freezing cold. After the game, you saying? After the game. So you had to go stinky booty. No, so we had shower to, pill. Nah, shower pill. No, no, no. yeah, mo most. <laughs> you know what we did? You know, you know, uh, what is it? The heating water? Yeah. You know, from the, the heating pad. Ooh. You know, that's just sitting there. Get the, that ooh. stink ass water. Get the fuck. We out had of to it. cup it. We had to cup who it. Who is we? Put cold water in it. The people who wanted to take showers, and we had to put a bunch of that hot water in there. And then get some cold water, make it lukewarm, and use oh, that to take shower. Like smell like smell like old. Yes, it was horrible. Hot <laughs> me oh, and the hot oh, pack stink, bro. It was yes. The hot pack stink. Horrible. But, hate, oh, I, oh my. So I get it. I get it. Yeah, hate it. Okay. Hate them. Hate them. <laughs> hate, 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 mm. hate, hate. <laughs> we gotta talk about the guy. In do we have to talk about them? Mm -hmm. We do. Anthony Edwards. Okay, you I don't want to talk him, about him either. <laughs> shit. I like it. You're Adidas brother. I, I, I didn't compliment I like, this. I like it. I said, like, ooh, okay. The Jamaican track suit was, either. I thought you we were still about The bobsled team. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fit, Gil. Gil, he's roasting <laughs> us. I'm not. Gil. I can't get it off. I got my 80s look. You know, my loud 80s look. Like We got to talk about another NBA legend, though, Shaq, during Inside the NBA after the Clippers T-Wolves game. Uh, and, and only scored 18 points, but before the game, Shaq was asked about Ant's breakout season, and he said it's the not following. not place to say he's great now or, you know, he's not great now, but I, I think he's a fabulous player. But where I come from and, you know, watching people like Candace and Jamal, you have to be great for a long period of time because we all remember Jeremy Lin. Mm. What happened to him? Mm. Now, we love Shaq on this show. Mm -hmm. I support many of Shaq's ventures. Him even a Papa John's after the whole situation with, with Big Papa John. Out of respect for Shaq. But yeah, I need to know, 0 to 100, chances that Anthony Edwards' career ends up like Jeremy Lin. Zero. I, listen. <laughs> I said negative zero. I, I, I don't even know why that was a comparison because uh, one was a super, one is a future superstar. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Lin was, um, he was someone who was trying to make the team, right? He's trying to make a team. He ends up making it. But if we're going to say, do we remember what happened to Jeremy Lin? Then, then let's remember what happened to Jeremy Lin, who was sitting on the couch, laying on the couch, um, about to get cut. And then he got put in and became a sensation. Yep. Right? 
It wasn't hype. He was bussing ass. This was no foolery. He was bussing ass. Fourth quarter dominance. Meaning, meaning you don't just wake up with shit like that. What he was doing in fourth quarter was amazing. He was showing people he was a basketball player. He was showing he can finish games, he can carry teams, right? The rest of that team was following Jeremy Lin. Mm. So let's remember what happened to Jeremy Lin. One player did not fuck with Jeremy Lin because he wanted to be all great for New York. Huh? I normally don't condone snitching, but go ahead and go ahead. No, I'm and just saying. Pin. So Melo was not this is happy. obvious. Yeah, this was not Mello obvious. was not happy with Jeremy Lin's stardom. No. It was a clash. You gotta remember. <laughs> drink. If you're at yeah. home, you gotta drink every time Gil. Amari, St- St- Amari Stoudemire was him. Yep. He was New York. Number one. Then Melo came, took it from him. Yep. Melo goes down. Amari's there, back. Jeremy Lin comes. Amari says, you do you. So Amar- so Jeremy Lin has Amari on his side. Mm-hmm. And they're winning games. They're playing well. <laughs> Melo didn't like none of that. So Melo is the one who said, I don't want him here. I want him out now. 100%. Now you're talking about a guy who's, you know, from Harvard. From the Bay, though, too. Yeah, Bay Area, Harvard. It means not mm. one of the toughest guys mm. that's going to be in the NBA. So you go to Houston, right? You go to Houston. Houston just signs James Harden, right? You just max out James Harden. Jeremy Lin don't want the same trouble. Oh, no. He just signed a deal. You just came in town. I don't want the mellow trouble no more. Like, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to figure this out. So he took a back, back, back seat because he doesn't want to clash with this superstar or doing something that's going to piss him off like he did in New York. He don't want to be shipped off. So what happened to Jeremy Lin is a superstar wanted him out, and from there, from the rest of his career, he didn't want no problems with anybody, so he just blended in. Yeah. That's, that's what happened, if we're going to remember. But well, now let's talk about <laughs> if we're going to hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's talk about Ant. Like, let's talk. But so that oh. comparison, you talk about Anthony Edwards, fastest in NBA history to 500 made three pointers, did in 189 games. Jeremy Lin hit 449 three pointers in his career. Ants point per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, steals, blocks. Why we're not all no, on the rock? No, I'm saying no, the trajectory. No, though, we're not, not going to compare. Don't even, not even don't, don't even do that. It's not even a comparison. No, I don't know why we can do it. It's this. not like stop. So you're saying it's zero. I mean, are we, that's what we're allowed to do now. The, the, is that what sports has come to, where you can, you can, you can compare I'm saying, a number one pick that's all I'm saying. Yeah. to a non-drafted pick and this is to no, make a point? Because Shaq did it, and we got to respond to it. it it's a, like they, you say stuff, they got to respond to it. It was a bad take for Shaq. I think it was a bad. I don't it think just, Shaq just, was thinking about the name he was trying to use for Ant to compare to when he used Jeremy Lin as a sensation as like a, like a Milli Vanilli. Mm-hmm. Like you, you hit, boom, you got a out of there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Edwards, though, yeah, even in Georgia, like, what do you mean? This dude is serious. He's him. He's him. Yeah, but then that. the last two years, what he's shown, ain't no Jeremy Lin type shit. Like, come on, man. He came into, he got drafted as a third option. Yes. I remember my first take on him. And I said, I said, out of the three, the top three, he possibly can be the bust. You're saying about Ant? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Because he had Cat, D'Angelo, both young, trying to be the number one and two. So yep. they can really push him out and say, hold on, young fella. No, 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 no. You're going to take a back seat. Yep. And that would have hindered him um, versus the other two players. So... Him actually still being a star when they had a one and two option lets you know his personality. Yeah. He, he's, he's, he's him. He's about that. Well, you think about it, though. Cat, number one pick. Mm-hmm. Then you got him, number one pick. Two number one, and Wiggins was a number one pick. So they got a lot of number one picks that then walk through there. Mm-hmm. So when he walks through the room, 
there's an expectation, potential expectation. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, do we wait a year for him to pan out? Well, the first year he showed that yeah. panning out wasn't going to be an <laughs> option for him. He's already him. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, all right, Kat, what do you think? D'Angelo, what do you think? But Ant is the type of alpha, like, I don't give a fuck what any of y'all think. Mm -hmm. I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about him. Like, and he's jokingly with it. He's like, man, I'm just here to play, but you ain't fucking with me. Mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm him. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like, you can't compare him to no Jeremy Lin, because he's him. And, and he's shown it. And now Cat got to take a back seat. D'Angelo. Fuck up out of here, bro. Yeah, yeah. We don't need you no more. And how many how many rings how many rings does Javel got? I start getting them. He got did he win he won one with the leg twenty twenty. Yeah. One. I'd rather just I mean for some. That's it. He only got one. He yeah. got three. Hold on, let me. That's why we got the computer here, Gil, because I don't know everything. Who else would you he know, have played with? Yeah, he did play with the Warriors. Yeah, I got one with the Warriors. Two. Yeah, she sure. should be two with the Warriors, right? Three times three. champion. Two with the Warriors. One with the Lakers. Oh man, he's a hey hey if if he gets like what two more. If he gets two more, he'll be, he'll be up there with Shaq. Robert Gordon. You see, you see how stupid that sounds, yeah. right? <laughs> you see how stupid that sounds? Got to throw <laughs> him Jamel, in the conversation. you get two more, boy, we're going to be putting you up there with some Shaquille O'Neal. I'm going to be like, come on, man. That's how they sound. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep this thing moving and shaking. It's not 420 yet, but it is time to roll it up. Okay. We got graphics. Guess how I'll be setting them up. Oh, they got the graphics oh show up. Bro, this is no. high level TV. I don't know if y'all know at home. <laughs> but this is how we do it. All right, so we're not gonna roll it up really. We're gonna role play. Rashad, we got you. If you wanna go ahead, I know take off that uh, electric ah, Let me go ahead and transform myself. Now, now we told y'all we had KD on the show earlier. <laughs> Hi, Doug. We were flying, but y'all watched. <laughs> we got <laughs> still click that. Transform like myself, man. Uh -huh. I'm KD now. So we got oh, shit. <laughs> of Kevin Wayne Durant, we got Rashad McKenna. So I'll ask you a couple of questions. And doing your best, KD. I know KD may watch this, be like, nobody speak for me. KD, if you watch, like and subscribe. No. <laughs> Along with Clay. Uh, so first question for you. What are your expectations for this season? Man. Really to, to do as little as possible. You know, come in and really be an example of mega star energy on this team. And um, really to propel Devin Booker to another level of uh, accountability, right? And uh, let's finally, you know, take CP over the top. I think I'm really here just to let him get on my back, take him over the finish line so he can sit his ass down somewhere, <laughs> be with his family. Get off these state farm commercials, <laughs> you know. And I think uh, I really just want to beat the Warriors. You know, okay. I just really want to, you know, smack Draymond in the face, thinking he could do it without me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they did it without you, I know, so they did it without you. Uh, <laughs> but I understand. That ain't count, really, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, because my foot was on the line. You know what I'm saying? When I was on that other team over there. Yeah. If I, if I didn't... If my foot wasn't that damn big, I don't think y'all, I don't think y'all take it over the top over me. So let's let's talk about we're gonna set a little scenario. It's game seven. Mm -hmm. Suns are down by two. Y'all in the huddle, diagramming the last play. Who gets the last shot? You or Devin Booker? Because of I'm a team player and I understand how to win games, I did the same thing. For, uh, for Kyrie in Brooklyn. Jock drew the play up for me. KD, we want you to whoop, whoop, whoop. Nah, man, I think this play should be for Kai. Kai gonna hit this. I think he do the, I'm gonna do the same thing for Book. For book. I'm, I'm gonna make sure that he gets the play because it's gonna be on me. The attention gonna be on me. Everybody gonna think I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the shot anyway. So let's run it for Book. You know, I'm Kevin Durant. You, you do know who I am, right? Kevin Wayne Durant? I am Kevin, <laughs> yeah. I'm Kevin Durant. I know who you are. So yeah, so let's let's get him some let's get him some shine. Let's get him over the top. I'm a team player. I know what it is and what it takes to win championships. We got a few more questions, but you're already halfway to an Emmy. I'm just gonna be real. This is <laughs> exquisite acting. Exquisite. <laughs> so you mentioned CP3 earlier, you know, State Farm commercials, all that goodness. Do you, as Kevin Durant, do you trust CP3's body to hold up 
for the postseason? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. All that fast walking ain't gonna slim them pounds down, boy. You're gonna have to move them hips a little bit faster. <laughs> I don't trust you. All right? Where the chef at? We need to get the <laughs> diet right. Because whatever injuries you having is reoccurring, right? Especially around the time the playoffs hit. I'm tired of seeing you get the game six and then you got to sit. I'm done with that shit. You feel me? Good. Do you agree with Kevin? Wait, Wayne huh? Durant? Huh? Do you agree with Kevin <laughs> Wayne Durant? Stop laughing, I'm man. I'm talking about Kevin. Hey, if, this, if that's how Kevin sounded, he ain't getting the ball, okay? <laughs> You ain't getting the ball. You gonna give me the ball. You ain't getting the ball. You gonna Kevin. give me the ball. You give me the ball. Who else you gonna get to? Shit. Who else you gonna get to? You gonna give me the ball, but you gonna lose some weight in the process, big fella. You little big girthy around the. Listen, CP, we need you to get right around this time for us to win, and I gotta trust you not to get hurt. That's it. I, I actually, I actually, I actually trust. CP a little bit more this year because he doesn't have to do as much. I think this is one of those times where he gets to like like relax a little bit more. You know, you know, before it's it's one of those things where he was doing too much. Yeah. You gotta remember he controls every aspect of a play. Right? You know, you're talking about 24 seconds of a shot clock. He's going he's going about 19 of it. Yeah. Pick and roll, back pick and roll, doing this, picking, you know, so he's doing a lot to the point where I think, you know, now that you have another offensive player that's coming in that's very high level, he don't have to really spend a lot of energy trying to control the game. And I think that's going to let allow him to just rest a lot more. Yeah. All right, so KD, I got another question for you. Uh, you said on your glorious podcast, the ETCs, that you haven't spoken to Kyrie since the trades. Why not? He broke my heart, man. He broke my heart, man. Um, <laughs> I really believe you, Kevin Durant, right now. I'm just saying, man. I, I just really feel like these are kind of conversations we need to have before things transpire, right? James ain't want to be here. We got James over here to join us. He leave. Then here you go. You don't want to take the vax. You don't want to. You, you posting things, you, you stirring up controversy, but we still play through it, right? So as we play through it, we thinking that at some point we're gonna turn the corner, we're gonna turn this thing on. Next thing you know, hey man, y'all need to get me the fuck up out of here. I'm cool, the pretzels don't be done, y'all ain't got the popcorn popping in time. It's a lot of bullshit going on out here in Brooklyn, right? Get me the fuck up out of here. Low cheesecake from Junior's. But me and you supposed to be Dog, you supposed to be my dog, right? Because we had a conversation about doing this. So I'm kind of upset we didn't finish the season. Because now you make it look like I'm the guy that doesn't finish. Because I started this shit. This is, what, this is how you treat me? This is how I start, I start this shit and you just leave. Now I feel like, you know, it's unfinished business. So I'm kind of pissed. So when we play Dallas, it's up. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? He, he hates every team. What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, everybody. What's up? What's up for everybody? everybody? Last question. Again, like I said, you know, halfway through, Emmy. Now we got to go some. You got a BT award. Let's go. Right. You got NAACP award. Let's go. You know, my favorite awards. But last question. How do you respond to allegations that you're a ring chaser? Ooh. Oh, let me go into my burner account. <laughs> Fuck these motherfuckers talking about you know, ch chasing a ring. Fuck, I ain't chasing no damn ring. I respect it because that's what it looked like. Um, everybody keep comparing my departure from OKC and going to join the Warriors to LeBron going to join the Heat. But they don't say he chasing rings. Are they call, they call they LeBron a ring chaser. Okay, cool. So as long as we got that, so then I can still be the greatest of all time and chase rings then, right? No. No, okay. Why? So Jordan didn't chase rings, so they're going to always use that. 
Well, just the conversation what do you mean? between me and me They're going to use it because Jordan, Bird, and Magic didn't do it. So you know how the 80s. He let Scottie Pippen sign that shit he did. Don't let the 80s give you PTSD, man. You know how the 80s do. You know, they try to say, look, we stayed. Because it was a prison back then. Yeah. Um. I, I, listen, <laughs> it was a prison. It was a prison. <laughs> now like, you no, can't leave. No, can't really. Leave. No, no, no. If, if, no, it was really like a prison. Think about it. The Bulls, the Bulls are going for their third championship, right? Yeah. What broke the Bulls up? Jerry Krause? Jerry. I watched the last dance. Before the season, this is y'all last chance. Man. I don't care what y'all do. It's over. He's fired. Like, that's what ended the dynasty. They wasn't slowing down. They could have won two more, but Dickhead wanted to bring his little friend in. So it's like... It was a prison then of what was going on. So is KD ring chasing? Of course. What, what the fuck else am I going to do? We spoke about rings. Chase poverty? We're like, what rings. Are you? All these. Well, so, wow. Everyone who's saying they're chasing rings are chasing jobs. Mm. Right? They're chasing jobs and chasing network. Mm. They're trying to put themselves in a better position to be successful. What's the fucking difference? Yeah. I don't know why y'all are mad at me, fo. Because I ain't did nothing to you. <laughs> right? I just, I've already won two. Mm-hmm. And two so finals how, MVPs. I how can you say I'm chasing rings now? I think if anything, you say I'm chasing stats. But, or I'm just trying to, you know, find a girlfriend <laughs> or a good barber. But I, I feel like that whole, the ring chasing. Chasing something else. The ring chaser phenomenon was really a slight to LeBron initially. And it's like, what the fuck is he supposed to chase? Losses? Like Cancun? Like, what are you supposed to be chasing? <laughs> my, 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 my complaint was always this. Unless you were in those prime cities, exactly the same cities that are the biggest markets, L.A., Boston, and Chicago, right? You didn't have to go anywhere. People were com- players were coming to you. So mm-hmm. Magic didn't go anywhere. Yeah, everyone was coming. Magic uh, was in Hollywood. Jo- Jordan didn't go nowhere. Everybody was coming. You got to remember, Dennis came. Ron Harper came. Yep. Everyone came. Boston. The shit, all they championships because someone else came to their team. Yep. So it's not like they built it off of just draft picks. So someone chased the rings to get the ring. No one was going to Cleveland. Mm. I'm not chasing Cleveland. I'm not going to Cleveland. You know, and that's just it. So if you're in a city that just doesn't have the 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 city itself or the owner that wants to win rings, you got to remember, if you're Clippers for the last before Bomber, you, your legacy was done. Yep. You're sitting at the draft. This is basically what it was. You sit at the draft, one, two, three, and they say, Clippers, you might as well just retire. You fucking just retired because your legacy, there was no legacy for you. Yep. You was going to play two, three years, get the fuck on out of here. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I'm not so, paying you, yeah. I don't you, care how good you do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you, your, your legacy is built on the organization if they want to, are they, uh, do they want to win rings or do they want to get money? And the question, I remember someone asked me this question. They said, if you had a team, I'm giving you 10 years. You get to have this team for 10 years. In those 10 years, you win five rings, but your team is worth 500 million. Or you don't win, and your team is worth 2 billion. Which do you take? Uh, am I a rich white man in it? I'm a role player as a, as a rich <laughs> Caucasian man. <laughs> don't You're a businessman. Give me my 2 billion. Thank exactly. You. I can fuck about y'all. Exactly. So the only way you got to remember to win rings, you have to pay players. Right, you, you, there's a there's a expendage, right? So you can just keep having rookies, rookie leave, rookie leave. I'm never gonna pay any big money. That was the Clippers model. So are you saying that Donald Sterling was the goat owner then? Everybody. But wanted, think about it. Everybody wanted to be Donald Sterling because he doesn't want to pay for it. They, they can they can listen. They can say whatever the fuck they want. Everybody wanted to be his motto. Yeah. So what are you? So are you saying that? If you was a rich black man, you would have did, did 500 million? Hell no. I don't know. Fuck a ring. Give me the two billion. Two billion? <laughs> give me the two billion. No, I, I, I got to be I'll go buy then. another team. I got to be MJ. No, I need my rings. Need the rings? 
As a businessman? You don't as want a, rings? Uh, you're a, right. What I'm right. saying, as a businessman, give me the two billion. But if you think as an NBA fan, if I already have 10, 20 billion, I want the five rings because that's bragging rights. It so all depends financially where you are. It adds to what you're just saying, though. If you Mike, you take the 500 in the rings, it adds value to your brand and future no, draft picks, all of that. No, it don't. So if Mike had <laughs> rings under his belt right now as, a, as an owner GM, it would be more valuable for the Hornets. I, I think it'd be more valuable to Mike though, because he's getting them shoes Mike, off. Nobody's buying a pair of Donald Sterling. Mike, Mike himself. Okay, that's the owner, right? I mean, he's I mean, the owner. Mike himself. Yeah, the right, owner. Y'all want to play this game? Y'all want to be one of those eighties? Let's go. Y'all want to be one of those eighties? Let's 80s go eighties. Y'all want to be Chris? Yeah, you don't know. Y'all want to be basketball. Chris and Rob? <laughs> you don't know. You want to be those no, no, guys? No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the last organization sold was the Wizards, 300, 300 something million. Right? That was the last organization that sold before the Clippers. Right? Was that, was that what it was? About 300 something million. Because the Bucks sold for like 550, I want to say it was 2014 ish. 2014. When did Donald Sterling sell the scene? Was it what, 14 or 15? 15. No rings. 14. No ring. So 500 million. Yeah. No rings. 2 billion. 2 billion. But reckless side boot taking photos with Magic Johnson and Mac. What, 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 what I'm saying is, Look at the value of the team because of the market it's in. Right. So if you're in Charlotte, you can win 20 rings. You're never going to be more valuable than the Lakers, the Knicks, or the Warriors. That's, I don't care how many rings you got. It's still Charlotte. That's North fair to Carolina. say, though. But the Clippers sold for $2 billion in 2014. Bucks now have a valuation of 3.5. And 3.5, and Clippers still ain't won no ring, and they're still valued more. More, more, more bread. Steve but, the, but the Bucks have one. They won. Is, yeah. Which is why their valuation goes up. But the Clippers' value is still higher than theirs. With no rings. Because it's yeah. L.A. I do, that's what I'm saying. But so with Charlotte, it would be a different Charlotte. dynamic if Charlotte. Jordan had rings under that belt. The value of the city goes up. The number goes man, up. No one, no one's, man, they can win 20 rings. Nobody can be like, oh, I'm about to move to Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> the, is it that bad? It ain't that bad. It ain't that bad, it ain't that bad but it ain't no, city, like no it. big city for... It's a solid place. It's cool. Is it better than Salt Lake City? It's like a little Atlanta. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. Like a little Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, Air is sure. musty in Salt Lake. My throat still hurts. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm just being, God, I, I've never been to Salt Lake. I walked into the I, I was like Arnold Schwarzenegger in a, what's, what's the joint? <laughs> All, every Total movie? Recall. When every he, movie? <laughs> <laughs> you thought you was turning white for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning white. Oh, shit. Fine people, though. Fine people in Salt Lake City. So, Underdog Fantasy is paying our bills. Y'all see the cups. Y'all see the logos. They really hooked up the Jumbotron. We got the Jumbotron up here. We mm -hmm. got the nice monitor back here. It's the first time we're doing this. We got, we got to try and get them a bag. We're doing higher lower? We're going to do some higher lower, but mm -hmm. I'm going to kick it off. It is the end of Black History Month. It's March 1st. Mm -hmm. It's Wednesday. We starting with White Guy Wednesday. White Guy Wednesday. White Guy Wednesday. So I'm, I'm picking In three. In the NBA? For me, I'm picking three Caucasians in the NBA, higher or lower. Like, wait, wait, American white or the, the new media white? You mean a European? The European white or American white? I got, I got two American whites, one on the fringe, one outlier. But he technically counts. I think he was raised in America. Mm. Okay, this is going to be some horrible ass stats. No, what? Mm. Why this is going to be some horrible ass stats mm. then. Here we go. I got Franz Wagner, 16.5 points at Bucks. I got a higher on that. He dropped 25 on him last time. Giannis was oh, playing. Oh, really? He did. With Giannis playing. He's coming. Greco-Nigerian. They look at him different. I'm just being real. Mm. I got Alex Caruso, honorary light skinned during time with the Lakers, with the Bulls. I don't know what he's got going on out there. He might be back. Is that but, five and a half points? But he's been, he's been dropping like sixes lately, so it's, it's going to be a little shaky. I need him to really deliver. Ooh. Again, two. Uh, at the Pistons. I go yeah, higher. I go I, higher, too. I got Tyler Hero. Wait, t for the white people that work here, Tyler Hero still, you guys still embrace Tyler Hero, right? You haven't, you haven't put him in the draft yet? All right, so Tyler Hero, <laughs> 2.5 three-pointers versus six. So I took this bet. Down lower. Yeah. Not a bet. I took this pick him, excuse me. Last game, he hit two, but he had a couple janky three Bow. twos pissing me off. He's going to hit three this time, Gil. They're in no, Miami. I, I get it. I get it. But I'm just saying, this is not the bubble. Tyler mm. Hero was a bubble player. Mm -hmm. Like, when that bubble was here, that man was him. <laughs> he was dealing with situations. You know, so he hasn't been performing as great since the bubble. He got, Tyler got three threes for me tonight. And if I, I win, I'm going to donate. Against Philly? Nah. 
That defense, they got a, they got a solid defense. No, they ain't got no him. solid defense. I just they got he got to guard Maxi. Maxi gonna give him the run for his money. Who they gonna put PJ on? PJ Tucker. Mm. I guarantee you, PJ Tucker's uh, higher lower is half of half of three. <laughs> <laughs> half of three. How you make a half of three? <laughs> How you make half a three? <laughs> but if I if I win, my white guy wins, I'm gonna donate a portion uh, to my local Tender Greens, one of my favorite Caucasian establishments. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious salad, a beautiful chocolate chip cookie, well rounded. Tender little sea Greens. Salt on All right, but get, now let's, let's get into your your higher lower pickups from the good folks at Underdog Fantasy. I know they're watching this right now, smiling, cheesy. So good, you got. Kevin Durant, 25.4 points and assists combined in his debut with the Suns at the Hornets. Yes, sir. Scary Terry. Yeah, why you go lower on Scary Terry? You don't believe in him? 22.5 nah, nah, points. They get locked down by that Suns defense, boy. <laughs> they got KD out there. Oh, man. He I hope they're watching this. He's about to go through the blender. Devin Booker, Devin Booker. So you just so you guys know, when I do white guys Wednesdays and there are not enough options, I'm a, I'm gonna bring him over potentially. <laughs> if I don't like if I don't like my my, my the different you know my opportunities for the white guy, I'm gonna bring Devin Booker over just so y'all know. <laughs> don't be surprised when you see it. Four point five rebounds, you got higher. Demar Derozan, twenty eight point five points and assists, you going higher. Bulls at Pistons. He's playing the Pistons. I need about two of them assists. This ain't, this ain't 88, 89 Pistons, bro. That's just, yeah. Not the 80 Pistons. This is 2023. No, stop. No. No, we're not doing that. Stop saying the 80s Pistons. The late 80, 80s Pistons. Yeah, the late 88, 89. No, that one. The, the rest of them was, the rest of that was not defensive Pistons. I, I need DeMar to, to give three of those assists to Alex Caruso. Let's right. go, baby. Let's go. Give me them six points. All right, Rashad, we're going to put your... Underdog fantasy pickups up. You got a, 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 well, a robust slay. You got John Morant higher six rebounds. Bow, 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 bow. He, he gonna need that's the exact, rebound. That's after exactly. all shit going on. Yeah, in that's life exactly right what he was trying to do. <laughs> 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 we got Donovan Mitchell. What eight point five rebounds plus assists? Nah. Higher? Yes. You don't not. think? Give, he can five, 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 four. He give you four or five. Bro, his mom said. You Dame be- has 71. You got to get 72. His mom said. Do you think so you called him from a finish line? That means it's go time. <laughs> it's go time. Against Boston, though? He going to shoot. He going to shoot. You got it's got to be a complete game for him. Jalen Brown, four free throws made against yeah. the Cavs. Kevin Wayne Durant, the man who you eloquently portrayed earlier in this show. Portray, portray, I can't. I'm fucking up. Black History Month's over. 4.0 <laughs> assists. You got higher. And then Spencer Dinwiddie, six assists lower. You know him, Dinwiddie, getting buckets. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I, yes. Listen, I just seen Dinwiddie. I'm taking that. You got to take that. I'm now, taking that. The one thing I love about Underdog Fantasy is that they have the insurance option, right, where I don't, I don't use it, but I know people do. Yeah. If I'm, I'm, if I'm going to make a pick of them, I'm picking them. I don't, <laughs> what do I need to insure it for? I'm, this is what I'm rolling with. And if a coach happens to let me down, it's never the player's fault. Dinwiddie, where are you? Ben Witty. Ben Witty. Yeah, you can't lose. I need that you can't pick. lose, man. You can't lose with that. Those picks right there, those picks are solid. And you're coming from a very expertise brain here when you talk about scouting reports. Facts, I seen your picks last night. I did. The, yesterday's. Almost. Luca, 1.5 yeah. rebound? Come on. I need nine, and I'm good. And those be the worst because they be right near it and somebody else grabbing them. Like, bro, you stop hating on the pickup. Joel, Joel MB, when he hit the game winner, it was one of my points too, but it didn't count. The game winner and he hit it. Oh, when he threw court. the joint? Yeah, uh, man. I'm like, yo, hurt. y'all cheating, man. Hey, in the comments after you like and subscribe. Uh, then we, I got it. you, baby. We're going to come back tomorrow. <laughs> We're going to see who won or lost. We're going to start figuring out punishments. And, and he's from Woodland Hills. Who? Then with he. Oh, you already know. Cali boy, so we don't pass like that. Taff. Definitely Taff not pass. pass like that. Ooh. San Fernando Valley, you're, 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 you are not giving up the Rocket High School. I would have not rolled you if I was Ooh. in that grand squad. No, you got a lot of rebounds. What? You got a lot of rebounds. You were missing? No. Okay. The rest of the team. Okay. But well, we made. We, <laughs> We couldn't do hey, everything. <laughs> hey, we made guys like that. We made guys like Gil look like selfish players because a whole game of He not passing to nobody out here. And that's they all did. trash. Let's triple team them. Yep. That, that, Let's I jump them. I did that. I got, I, got I used to read the daily news every morning. Like, I, I have a good team, night. Drop like, triple teamed. I drop like 30, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be the number one scorer. And then Gil drop a 50 piece <laughs> or somebody. Like, God damn, dog. Take the night off. Triple team, quadruple team. I was just 
faster than He's not passing. Everyone. Oh, everyone knew that. I averaged, I averaged one assist my senior year. The Lord have mercy. <laughs> I and I'm surprised. I don't know how I did that. How you didn't get to McDonald's? Because I was a Valley kid. I didn't. What you mean? Did they run Brandon, out of Brandon stuff Jennings, up here? Brandon Jennings was, was a Valley like kid. But, <laughs> and and I, I, BJ, I, BJ, BJ Valley kid, he no, made no, it? No, no, VJ was uh, Cal State Dominguez. Ah. Yeah, Valley at that time was not. I, they was were, white, I was a white boy player. I was ranked 100. You said they 99. thought you was a Mexican. Yeah. They didn't even really My pops really. th thought you were a Latino kid. <laughs> I knew you, though. We had some mutual friends. So I was like, nah, I seen Gil coming to Crenshaw. <laughs> he was the outlier on that grant. <laughs> <laughs> this man is black. All right, now we got to get to our last segment, last but not least, mostly fans. Will we give it to the fans? Let them ask us some questions. You know, we have mostly fans. I was looking at the comments for the last episode. Mostly fans, again, a few outliers. But dedication. We appreciate all your comments. Mm -hmm. It was about 12, 13 comments from the same person. I'm like, you're working harder than me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Underdog, give this man a check. <laughs> all right, so question for y'all. We know what the most disrespectful dunk of all time is. That's, that's not debatable. But what's the most disrespectful in-game dunk in NBA history? In-game dunk in NBA history. The, think about it, Gilbert Shot. I'm going to start with you first. I'm going to go with DeAndre. Okay. DeAndre Jordan. <laughs> you know it's disrespectful. I call it like the, we call it the graveyard, man. Send that man Brandon Knight to the cemetery, boy. Yeah, he messed his career up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a career ender. That was that was like the launch kind of when, when social was really first starting getting going. And you know in those moments, if I deal with meme culture, they was they destroyed that man. That look, yeah, that DeAndre yeah. look. Mm. Yeah, that yeah, that mm. yeah, he, it messed his career. Bro couldn't really function after that. I felt. Couldn't breathe to say. Like, how, how your family supposed to look at you after you get dunked on like that? They don't look at you. That's, the only thing he could have did was pull a John Morant. Yeah. I'd be right <laughs> back. <laughs> I'll be right Roll back. The window down. Roll, that window. Roll the window down. Roll the window down. All right, Gil. <laughs> Most disrespectful in-game dunk in NBA history. In-game dunk. No. no, I'm just saying in-game it would then be probably Blake Griffin on Kedrick Perkins. Mm. Did Blake dunk on Kedrick? He dunked on a lot yeah. of dudes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a member. You had a memorable one. Not our fellow media member, Kendrick Perkins, Gil. Yeah, he's been, he's been, he's been saying a bunch of rubbish <laughs> he lately. Deserves, so, he yeah, I got to poke him a little bit. You know, you know, I got to poke him a little bit. I think there's one y'all missed. I mean, we can go with the Sean Camps throughout history, Sean but Kemp, that one. in terms of sheer disrespect, Shaq on Chris Dudley. It wasn't just the dunk. It was, it was the push after, right? And then run away like nothing happened. I like, I, but when I think of stuff, when I'm thinking, I'm, you know, like the first things that just run through your brain is all Vince Carter in-game dunks. Like you'd be like, Alonzo Mourning. And, and that's what I say. You sit there and you'd be like, ah. Uh, Which one? I know. But uh, Vince seems like a nice guy, genuinely, like. But his ah. Alonzo over Morning. the Frenchman though. The Alonzo Morning dunk. Ooh, is very ooh. disrespectful. T Mac on Bradley. Absolutely. Disrespectful. Very, very big. Wait, hold on. Let me make sure you ain't got me up there. Now, I was we were gonna ask you yours, but I already know. Okay, I thought you had that boozer up there. Yeah. Hey, y'all, yeah, y'all tricky. I don't remember that one. In Utah. I got to go back. Do I got to go back? In Salt Lake City, Gil, in, with in, the musty in, hair? In Utah, it was, <laughs> it was, with the it was when they were telling everybody to take charges, and I tried to fast break. You took a, you tried to take a, what, were you, what was going on in your head at that moment? Did you think you were going to get the charge? Actually, I did. That's why I stood there. If but not, I would have just did the swipe and get the fuck out but of But does it matter, though? Did you think about even getting it? Because when we see it, we're going to remember the dunk. Mm -hmm. It's and like hand you know, on uh, you to listen, Watanabe. Like, listen, listen. Yes. You know, sometimes when you're standing there and you think about it, and then you realize, oh, I think he can jump higher than this line. <laughs> like, ah, yeah, I'm done. And then that's and one just pushed through me. But you know, it matters to us. Like, when you're about to take that charge, whether you get it or not, if he dunks it, it counts as a dunk on. You got it. Don't matter if oh charge. No, it's still a poster. Yeah, no, no, that's still a poster. Like I, I, I have, I have this. If you're a referee, oh. and they dunk and it goes in, there's no call. No call. No call. Stop. 
stop, stop doing that. And then <laughs> reverse it. Just come on, man. You can do a whole dance. Man, you messing the whole highlight up, man. Nobody wants the dunk go. We ain't got footage right yet, so I'm gonna show y'all and the viewers at home. Y'all can grab the clip off. It's the boozer. Well. It's the boozer. Oh man. Ah! With the left. Come on, girl. <laughs> that was a good charge, though. It was a solid Ooh. charge. You lose a little lean to the Why left. Why he yelling like he like like he dunked on somebody that was tall? <laughs> he dunked on Gil. Because he got Adrian Z, bro. <laughs> hibachi. Adrian Z, bro. <laughs> he, went to the, he went to the hibachi to get that shit hot. So this, that's what we do in these days. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. All I right. appreciate y'all, Rashad. We appreciate you for pulling up as always. This has been another episode of Gil's Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. What, what? Comment. You don't got to like and subscribe because I'm asking you to. Do it out of the kindness of your heart. Understand that. We have children to feed. We have mouths that we need to feed. We need that like and subscribe. So underdog, keep raising that bag up. <laughs> <laughs> we will see y'all tomorrow, our last show of the week. And we're going to bring that magic. Listen, I don't know if I'm coming tomorrow. I'm, again, I'm just, you know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> this is how y'all going to disrespect me up in here. Right? We didn't show the world. We showed each other. I know. I, the fact that I just got reminded, it looked it look better. It looked it look worse right here. They called a charge on that? Hell no. I was, saying, I was, was hoping they did. Oh, God had to review that one. <laughs> But you feel all the way back. But all the, the way back into the thing. I was still in the lane. It, yeah, it was all bad. It happened to Utah, though, so nobody probably saw it. Damn. <laughs> Y'all found <laughs> it. <laughs> Ooh, the white boys in the booth found it. <laughs> Get them. <laughs> bada boom, bada bing, man. How, how long was it? Which means a lot of jewels in there, man. It's a lot of jewels yeah, in there. That ain't that damn long, 115. That's a lot of jewels in there, man. Shit, I think I averaged about a 120 up here. Oh, I know you had it. I was, I was, oh. like, I was like, wait, just show me. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs>